Nabiyya min as a prophet, and he would be from the righteous. Who gave him the bushra? Those three angels. The story is mentioned in Surah Al-Dariya. In elsewhere, they came to him. One of the famous qualities of Sayyidina Ibrahim, he is seeing a stra strange people passing by. What would be the first thing he would think of? Prepare food, bring them food. He was known for he was known for being very hospitable to his guests. And we could learn a lot of lessons. Faragha is he sneaked. He sneaked to his family. He did not, he did not offer them. Some Sheikh Omar Abu Kaf is talking about this tonight. He said, you do not offer. Shall I bring you some food? Do you like to eat? What, what do you expect the guests to say? And haya and modesty. No, just like, oh, thank you. Usually, you know. He would no, don't ask. Don't. Go ahead, Faragha. He sneaked out he, and he brought the best of food. فَجَاءَ بِعِجْلِ سَمِينَ فِي سُورَةِ الْهُودِ حَنِيرِ He got the calf, which is a small cow, the calf, and he cooked it nice and, and good, and he brought it to them. فَقَرَّبَهُ إِلَيْهِ He offered them the food. What happened? Did they eat from it? Ayy. Did, did the angels eat from the food? We just want. Why didn't they eat? They don't eat. They don't eat. We need to eat to survive. Our body needs, our bodies need food to grow up. They don't need food. Yes. Uh, I keep on thinking. It's so quick. He so quick. Farahla. Farahla. Yeah. Did he have special microwave or so? So he prepared that. Well, how did he do it? That's a question. I right. So Subhanallah, that was a special thing about him. That that it's, it is known about saying that Ibrahim was so good to his. To his guests, and mashallah, we can talk about you know uh, that is known, still known amongst Muslims, you know, especially in Ramadan, <laughs> mashallah, yeah, known to that. This is part of our Islam, our religion. So, فما لبث يعني right away, quick, very quick, فراغ. We read it in the Quran that you need you need to be yeah, you like Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, especially when you invite him, inshallah. طيب. <laughs> 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 وَلَقَدْ جَاءَتْ رُسُلُونَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ بِالْبُشْرَةِ At this time, who was helping him serving the, the guests? His wife, Sarah, ala raqs al She was offering the food, bringing stuff, anything else can be done, helping Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam to offer the, uh, his guests, who happened to be angels, they didn't know they are angels yet. And then they didn't eat, what, what did Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam feel? فَأَوْجَسَ مِنْهُمْ خِيْفًا He was afraid. He was afraid, he said, what is wrong? He, he, they, they, they don't eat, they don't, they don't want to touch the food. Now he said, there's something, you know, what about you? What, what, is, what is going on in here? They said, we're, we're not. Inna rusul rabbik, we are the uh, messengers from your Lord. We are angels and we came for that mission, to go to the people of Holds. We don't eat. And fadahikat, when she knew that, the scholars talk about this, yani the mufassirun, she was probably, she knew about all of that, that going on. And nobody could stop it because it was very rampant in the society. But now it's Allah who will stop it, who sent angels. She was happy that finally the decision of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala comes to set everything right. And this is when the angels gave her the glad tidings, you're going to get married, you're going to get a boy. And his name is Ishaq. Not only that, from after Ishaq, you will get Ya'qub, Jacob. From you, you will see him. So she said, which is like, like usually women would do when she received something, uh, yeah, shocking news or something. Uh, she said, oh, how could this happen? How could I give birth when, when I'm old? I'm very old. They said, what are, you, what are you wondering about? It is the order of Allah. It is the order of Allah. It will happen. It will happen. خلاص. You are old. Ibrahim is old. حَتَّى هِي عَلَيْهِ السَّلَامِ himself. He said, قَالَ أَمَ الشَّرْطُمُونِ عَلَىٰ أَمَّ السَّنِيَ الْكِبَرِ Is it really? He's, is it really going to happen? You're giving me glad, glad tidings of, of, of baby. After I grow that old, from Sarah, he used to love. That's clear that he loved Sarah عليه السلام, very much. Anyways, it happens. And she got pregnant with uh, Sayyidina Ishaq عليه السلام. He will give birth to Sayyidina Ishaq. Majority of scholars of Muslims, sweeping majority, they believe. We, we, we talked about this before that Dr. Suhail, that was it, who was the, the one to be slaughtered? Ishaq or Ismail. We still have even some Muslim scholars believe that the one that was slaughtered or about to be slaughtered was Ishaq 
السلام, but sweeping majority, and even the, the, the context of Surah As-Sat that refers to that it was Sayyidina Ismail alayhi salam, and after Allah mentioned the entire story, he said, uh, Later on, we give him the glad tidings of Ishaq. So, she will give birth to Sayyidina Ishaq, and after him, even Sayyidina Ya'qub, in the life of Sayyidina, from Ishaq will come Sayyidina Ya'qub, in the life of Sayyidina Ibrahim. What we learn from that is never is in, nothing is impossible for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Even if it looks against, against the, the reality and the status quo, or not, we need to make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nothing is impossible for Allah azza wa jalla. Nothing. If he can do that with Sayyidina Ibrahim, he can, he can do it subhanahu wa ta'ala with everybody. Let's not lose hope from the, uh, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَوَهَبْنَا لَهُ إِسْحَاقَ وَيَعْقُوبَ كُلًّا هَدَيْنَا وَنُوحًا هَدَيْنَا Not only that, and he will mention from their lineage 18 prophets to come later on from his lineage that يعني, all of them are prophets from the lineage of Sayyidina uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam. When all of these blessings started happening to him, he is getting a baby and another baby, and, and he will see from his heart, he will see Ya'qub, and Allah will tell him all of them will be prophets. That's after فَلَمَّا اَعْتَزَلَهُمْ وَمَا يَعْبُدُونَ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ وَهَبْنَا يعني after, he, after he stood firm and passed the test, he left his people. He grew up by himself at a certain point, worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, no one else. So that, that is very, very helpful for us youth who are growing up here. I don't know why youth do not join us in here. That's not to say you are not youth, everybody here is youth. But see, if, we, if we can get our youth to join, uh, that would be great. So that was Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam by himself at a certain point. And the entire society, he is going one way, the entire society is going a different way. It doesn't matter. So we have the go with the flow, the peer pressure, the, the pressure from the society. It doesn't really matter. If you know you have the truth, go, follow it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will change the conditions for you. He was the only one to worship Allah, but then when he stood the test and he passed the test, wahabna. Allah started giving him, granting him everything, and everything would work for him. And Allah, he would make dua, Allah will give, will give him prophets from his lineage. Allah will give him prophets from his lineage. And he said, it's going to be only for those who are good uh, amongst your lineage. He will make dua that, oh Allah, uh, make this house يعني, uh, blessed. Allah will bless the house and Allah will... He will make dua, رَبَّنَا وَبْعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ Oh Allah, send in this ummah from Ismail a messenger from them. And Allah will send Sayyidina Ismail. Uh, he will be the only prophet to come from Sayyidina uh, Ibrahim, from Sayyidina uh, Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will come from Sayyidina Ismail alayhi wa sallam. Uh, it was Sayyidina Ibrahim, as we know, who built the house of Allah. وَإِذْ بَوَّأْنَا لِإِبْرَاهِيمَ مَكَانَ الْبَيْتِ Allah showed Ibrahim alayhi wa sallam the place where to build the house of Allah on earth. There is a house of Allah for angels in the skies. Many scholars argue that there is a house or, or bayt or Kaaba in every sky. Not only in the seventh sky, even in every sky. Especially the one in the seventh sky, or the seventh level of the year where angels make hajj to it. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered his prophet Ibrahim to build the house and this specific spot in Mecca, uh, uh, in this place. Yes? Did the, the Zamzam have to be there for him to come back and to do that? Or I mean, this had to make the, why he picked that spot? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed him Was Zamzam there? Well, Zamzam was not there yet because Zamzam was there. Yeah, that's, that's why he came back. Ismail okay. alayhi salam, when he, when he, we mentioned the story when Allah, when he left him along with his mother and Zamzam right. was there. So Allah, he said in the Quran, وَإِذْ Ibrahim. There are some ahadith that are not as authentic that Allah sent a wind uh, that, that looked like a bird and it showed him the place. But anyways, Allah said, وَإِذْ بَوَّأْنَا لِإِبْرَاهِيمَ مَكَانَ الْبَيْتِ Allah showed him the, the place of al and he built it. And later on, that's the house of Allah where millions of Muslims will go to. Not only that house was built by Sayyidina Ibrahim. Sayyidina Aisha asked the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, which, what, what house of Allah was, was built first on earth? He said, this house of Allah in Mecca. Ibrahim Alayhi Salam built it. And he said, and what's after that? He said, Masjid Al-Aqsa. It was built 40 years later. 40 years later. 
هو بلت المسجد الأقصى هو بلت المسجد الأقصى في فلسطين في جيرزلا سليمان عليه السلام rebuilt it right he re- like Sayyidina Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم they rebuilt the Kaaba because a great uh, flood came and they had to rebuild the Kaaba but it, they, they are not the one the ones who initiated the one who initiated Al Bayt Al Atiq is Yaqub whose name is Israel the uh, Prophet Yaqub عليه السلام and he was the one to build the Masjid Al Aqsa 40 years after the uh, the, 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 the Kaaba was built by Sayyidina Ibrahim and Ismail alayhi salam. What I'm focusing on in here is look at this person. He's so special person, so special. From him will come all the prophets. He along with one of his children will build Al-Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca. The spot was known from before. The spot of the Kaaba was known even to Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. But there was no house that was built. Or maybe it was initially built as some narrations and then it was, you know, swept away until it was initially Ibrahim alayhi salam who, you know, raised al-qawa'id al Ismail alayhi salam help him. As they were doing that, he, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent al-hajar al-aswad or the black stone. We have to talk a little bit about the building of the Kaaba. Black stone, Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam wrote it. Those are narrations. I will mention what is not as authentic and what is authentic. This is not as authentic. It's mentioned in the books of Tariq. This narration mentioned that the, the black stone, it is the part of it being white is authentic. It was white as it came from the sky. It came with Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam and it came down to earth with him. And then because of the sins of the human, it turned to be black and it's called the black stone. But where was it at this time and who brought it to Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam? First of all, the place. Where was the black stone? At the time of building the Kaaba and somebody, Jibreel alayhi salam, had to bring it to Sayyidina Ibrahim. Where was the black stone? Well, exactly, Ibrahim. At this time, he came, uh, uh, came with Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam from Jannah down to earth. And he was on earth until Sayyidina Ibrahim was building the Kaaba and Jibreel had to go and bring it to Sayyidina Ibrahim. It has to be India. It has to be India. <laughs> yes. Scholar said it was in India, Jibreel alayhi salam went and brought it to Sayyidina Adam to Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam from there and he just dropped it where a pigeon so is right now. So we should be able to go and kiss free. <laughs> if you can, you're not a meal. <laughs> sure it was an idea. That's one. <laughs> Here we go. Maybe Pakistan, you know. Maybe Pakistan is it used to be one thing. Uh, <laughs> In Pakistan. Okay, we talk about this. It was in the land of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Jibreel brought it to Sayyidina Ibrahim. Sayyidina Ibrahim had to, he took it himself and he put it in place. And the authentic hadith is Al Hajar Al Aswad, this black stone, or Hajar, Yameen al Rahman fil Ard. This is not physically, but this is like the right hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on earth. And every time you go, and that's why probably people are fighting to get it, and that's why the Prophet kissed it. It has so much blessings when you go to the house of Allah and literally get as close as possible to Allah, not physically, not the symbol, the symbol of it. So this is a little bit about the black stone. The Kaaba was built and, and Ibrahim alayhi salam built it as a house of worship for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Al-Bayt al-Masjid al-Aqsa was built also, also as a house of Allah. All of the political difference that we're having nowadays, this has nothing to do with it. Like we have some political difference about also Al-Hijaz now. It is now for sometimes been called Saudi Arabia. That, that's political. That's, that has nothing to do, you know, with, with, with the, the spirituality of it. Now Muslims are fighting with Jews and this and that. I'm not, I'm not uh, saying that this has right more than this or anything. No. But what I'm saying is this is a blessed place. This is the house that was built by Prophet uh, Ya'qub alayhi salam, who we believe in him just like uh, other uh, people. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. What was so special about Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam? Let's include by that. Let's talk about the sifat or the description of the characteristics of Sayyidina Ibrahim. And this, if you want, please, sisters and brothers, if you want, just mention him and feel free to come here. What, what is number one sifat that's mentioned in the Quran in so many ayat 
that Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam is known for. I will make it easy for you. Inna Ibrahim kana ummah. Ummah, many scholars said he was a great imam that everybody would follow him. Mujahid radiallahu anhu, he said he was an ummah, a nation by himself, a nation. So what made him a nation by himself or a great leader that everybody would follow? Now, Muslims, we Muslims talk about him, we follow him. Christians, they might have sessions like this about Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam, right? In their churches. Jews, they may do the same thing. He is followed by everybody. What made him, what made him qualify for that? Let's continue reading the ayah. Qanitan kana ummatan lillahi hanifan. He was fully obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Submission, full submission. Hanifan. He was, Hanifan is ma'il al al-bad, which means any wrong direction, he wouldn't even think of taking it. It's not only that he's going the straight path, yes, he could be going the straight path, but this is the only path you find. No, he had many wrong ways and and, but he, he was Hanifa, insisting to go the right way. You are the only one and you are so young and everybody worships these. Why don't you go with them? I don't care. Everybody worships the Kawakib at a certain time, the planets. Why don't you do like them? No, it's not right. Everybody, he was just Hanifa. And, and he pushed away from him any shirk or any, you know, disobedience or any uh, uh, bad thoughts of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was so pure in his uh, Islam. Shakiran. He was also grateful to the na'am of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When Allah gives you something, use it the right way. Admit it. And use it for Allah. That's what Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam did. And that's why Allah gave him wa وَيَعْقُوبَ كُلَّنْ هَدَيْنَا وَنُوحًا هَدَيْنَا مِنْ قَرْبِ وَمِنْ ذُرِّيَّتِهَا مِنْ ذُرِّيَّةِ سَيْنَا إِبْرَاهِيمَ From him came all of these prophets. Dawood, that was Sulaiman. From him came Prophet Dawood, Prophet Sulaiman. وَأَيُّوبَ وَيُوسُفَ وَمُوسَ وَهَارُونَ وَكَذَلِكَ أَنْزِ الْمُسْلِمِ وَزَكَرِيَّ وَيَحْيَ وَعِيسَى وَإِلْيَاسَ Know, somehow they will, uh, uh, he will see that in his record. Allahumma salli wa sallam wa barakatuh Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala Jameel Nabiya wa Muslim. This is one thing Ibrahim alayhi salam as a father, he had at certain point Ismail and Ishaq, both of his children. He used to read something for protection for them. And this is mentioned in the Sunnah. I have seen myself people resorting to amulets, hanging something in here for protection. Or believing in certain ways to give protection, especially for their kids or for themselves. Or to bring luck for them. Or this is the special number. Or whatever. What did Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam? Just giving one example that Sayyidina Muhammad told us that he used to do to protect his sons, his children, Ismail and uh, Ishaq. Anybody remembers the dua? Sayyidina, Ibrahim, Sayyidina Muhammad alayhi salam, he used to Yarqi al Hassan wal Hussein, he used to recite this dua on al Hassan al Hussein. He said, Wallahi, this is the dua that Ibrahim alayhi salam used to uh, read and say for protection for Ishaq, for Ismail and Ishaq. Uridukuma the kalimati lahi tamma, min kulli shaytanin wa hamma, wa min kulli ayni lamma. Uridukuma, I seek protection for both of you. With what? With kalimati lah al tamma, with the complete words of Allah. Min kulli shaytan, from every evil shaytan, devil, wa, wa hamma, and from any creature, wa min kulli aynin, any bad or evil creature, wa min kulli aynin, lama, and from any uh, evil eye that could inflict uh, you. So this is something, and Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to continuously say to read it for his children. My sisters, many of you, the, the, you ask me about questions like that, and the brothers too, uh, what prayers to help, this is a prayer, we all are worried about our children. Let's do like Sayyidina Ibrahim and Sayyidina Muhammad Let's say the dua again. If they are two, if they are more, you say u'idukum. Or if it's one, u'iduka. Bi kalimati Allahi. At-tamah. Min kulli shaytanin. Wa hamah. Wa min kulli aynin. 
This dua you read it for yourself. That's a protection from Allah. And then you read it for your children, inshallah, okay? Your children. You have baby, right? So you read this dua for them. Yes, you will, inshallah. So, uh, one more story of Sayyidina Ibrahim, alayhi salam. He was not only there, I'm a prophet, I got it. No, he wanted to get even higher at levels. There is ilm al yaqeen, ilm al yaqeen, knowledge of certainty. Like, we are all certain about our religion, but it's just the knowledge. Like, but ayn al yaqeen is to see something with your eyes, like I see you right now. So if one of my authentic friends, one of the very close friends, I am outside the masjid, and he told me there is a halaqa in the masjid, and Amr is giving the halaqa, and we have brothers, some brothers, and some sisters there. I believe him. This is ilm al yaqeen. He, he doesn't lie, he doesn't have to lie, and he's a very authentic person. This is ilm, still a knowledge. But if I see him myself, this is ayn al yaqeen, which is much stronger than somebody telling me. Sayyidina Ibrahim in the ayah in Surah Al-Baqarah He said, Oh Allah, show me how do you bring back to life the dead? How do you give life to the dead? Do you know this story another? Miss? Shana Tafana, Miss? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Yeah, me, Miss? Tell me another, so? Sayyidina Ibrahim one day pay attention to that. He said, Ya Rabbi, I believe in you, but I want to see it with my eyes. Can you show me how you give life back to the dead? If some, something is dead, how do you give it life? Right? So we are alive now. What's life? So Allah showed him and said, well, bring what? Four birds. And then kill them. Yeah. Cut them into pieces. Right? And then, yes, hold it. Put them on top of mount, different mountains. Yeah. Yes, and then four of them is. Yes. And then Allah will get them all back together. Back together. So he did it. And he saw the body coming from here, getting to this neck. He had the neck to it in his hand. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala got them together and they were alive again and they were able to, to fly. Allah showed him exactly again. They were able to fly again. So Allah showed him how he can bring, you know, how he can uh mauta or uh, give life to the, the dead. And, and that was not because he has doubt or anything, no. He wanted to go to a higher level of faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is Aina al yaqeen to see that with his own eyes. Now Sayyidina Ibrahim, it's time for him. He lived around, some narration mentioned, 170 years, 75, 190, and the maximum is 200 years. He has to die. Before him, shortly before him, Sarah of Sada, she passed away. Where? Where did Sayyidah Sara uh, Madat yani, or passed away? Which city? It's still until nowadays known. Uh, yani, it's known. Anybody would give it a guess? Saudi Saudi. Al Khalil. No. Al Khalil. Al Khalil. Al Khalil. In Al Khalil. What is Al Khalil? Hebron, right? Hebron. This is the city, and it's named what? Al Khalil. Al Khalil is what? The intimate friend. After the name, the, the, the laqab or the nickname of Sayyidina Ibrahim, because he was known as Ibrahim Al Khalil. Al Khalil is the close, intimate friend. He was close and intimate friend with whom? The Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine. Khalil al Rahman. He, yani sahib, in our terms, he is the intimate friend. He is Sadiq. No, he's higher than Khalil and Al-Khullah, the closest friend of Allah, or got to the level of being Khalil al Rahman. And this city is named after Sayyidina Ibrahim, and he was also buried next to Sarah because he loved her so much in Al Khalil, uh, and his qabr or his uh, uh, grave is still known until nowadays. But before he died, he lived all of his life for Tawheed, for La ilaha illallah, worshipping none but Allah. Not allowing anything that could come in his tawheed and his aqeed and his faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as he was dying, what did he do? You know what? I have some land in Iraq. This is we have to take care of. I have some land. I visited Egypt. When he visited Egypt, the Fir'aun there, he gave him a lot of money, a lot of cattle with him. And he lived in, uh, in uh, Palestine for a long time, so probably he had a lot of money too. 
But all he was worried about, as Allah mentioned in the Quran, وَوَصَّى بِهَا إِبْرَاهِيمُ بَنِيمُ وَيَعْقُوبُ Ibrahim a.s. gave the wasiya, the final wealth, to his children. And so did his, their children. When it was time for Yaqub a.s. to pass away, he passed it on to his children. What was it? The wasiya? The question, what will you worship after me? He is asking his children. That was the main thing. What is, we, do we move for the religion of our children? Do we work for the, invest for the religion and faith of our children? Or we do it for something else. That was the focus of Sayyidina Ibrahim and his children Ya'qub. And he made sure that the, the answer was clear. We will worship your Lord. And the Lord of your forefathers, Ibrahim, Ismail, and Muslim. We worship the Lord of your father, of your forefathers, all of these. One God, and we all will submit to him. So that was the life of the great, one of the greatest prophets, Sayyidina Ibrahim. And by the way, physically, the closest person who looked like Sayyidina Ibrahim was who? Somebody that we know. Prophet Muhammad. Prophet Muhammad One day he was giving full description of Isa alayhi salam. He said, Isa alayhi salam. Because he saw them. It looks like that person. Musa, like that person. And he said, talking about Ibrahim, the closest person to him in terms of feature, physical features, is your friend. Referring to himself, is the one, the speaker, the one who is speaking, referring to himself, sallallahu alayhi wa So he lived, and he was ordered to follow. And we now inspired you, O Muhammad, to follow the steps of Ibrahim, alayhi Now, and he did, he did. Now he's, Ibrahim, alayhi salam, is claimed by Jews and Christians, and they even call him, like, he was a Jewish. No, he was a Christian. Allah said, مَا كَانَ إِبْرَاهِمُ يَهُدِيًا وَلَا نَصْرَانِيًا He was not this, but they came after him. وَلَكِنْ كَانَ حَنِيفًا مُسْلِمًا طب, Who has the right to, to claim Ibrahim? إِنَّ أَوْلَى النَّاسِ بِإِبْرَاهِيمًا Those who have the right most to claim Ibrahim a.s. لَلَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوا Those who follow him. See how pure he was in his faith. Those who follow him, they have the right to لَلَّذِينَ اتَّبَعُوا Those who follow him. وَهَذَا النَّبِي And that Prophet Muhammad s.a.w. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And those who believe, likewise. All the faith, pure faith like that. وَاللَّهُ وَلِيُّ That was the great Prophet Sayyidina Ibrahim uh, salam, what did he do throughout his life? As Allah wa ta'ala made us live like Sayyidina Ibrahim, live like Sayyidina Muhammad salam, like all of these great uh, Prophets. Anybody got a comment or question or anything to add? Yes, Prophet. Uh, his father was not Muslim. But, but from, from that person came Ibrahim alayhi salam. Allahu Akbar. He said, Allah, Allah guides, give, guide. this is risk. You work for it and you deserve it, you take it. And, say, and, and what we learned from Sayyidina Ibrahim amongst the so many listeners, how did he, how did he live his life for da'wah? How did he invite his father? As mentioned in Surah Qarim, Ya Abati, asking, talking to him, addressing him in the best way. This is the right way, this is the way to follow, in the nicest way. Doesn't want to follow. So he left. Doctor. Did uh, his two sons get together? Ismail and Ishaq? Yes, they did. Uh, Ismail and Ishaq, they were both the ones who uh, uh, buried him. They buried him. They buried him. They got together, yes. Because Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi salam has mentioned that he came to Ismail alayhi salam. Narrations here will be, sources will be so many. The, the, much of the details that we have, if you're going to go into the details, it's going to come from the Bible. And as far as the Bible, we as Muslims, especially the historic, the historic religions, uh, narrations, that do not have any aqidah or any hukm, any ahkam. Uh, if said, if you, whatever narrations that you get from the Israelites, do not believe them. Do not think of it as you know something fake to follow and this is the truth. But do not deny it either. So it's you know when it comes to history, that's why we see al bidayah and nihayah Ibn Kathir. Many times they will quote from the Bible when it comes to history, what year he was born, but never when it comes to ahkam or rules or aqidah because this is different. We have Quran is unique about that. But when it comes to incidents, when it comes to did they meet or not, we we still have some differences. Like in the Bible, for example, the same story happened, the angels came, but they ate. 
In the Quran, they didn't eat. In the Bible, they ate. They ate from it, and they mentioned something they eat it, but it doesn't get to their body. It just somehow like evaporates. The food evaporates. Minor details in here and there. But yes, according to this narration, which is not like very authentic, that both of them had uh, they, they buried in there. Anyway, that's my question because the dua was for both of these children together, and there is no mention of the which dua. To, to send the messenger from them? No, I do them. Oh, okay, to protect them, yes, yes, yes. That's an authentic hadith from the uh, Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He said that that's the dua that he used to recite for Ismail. But this hadith is not clear that he recited to them in different occasions, or like he would yeah, he recited, maybe recited to Ismail when he was young at Mecca, or even when he was born. And he recited to his heart at a different time, it's not clear. But there is a narration that both of them get together and they made definite or uh, they buried it in the Anything else? About the Bible mentioning about who was They believe he is the first one. Yes, the Bible says yeah, the first no, one. They believe that, no, no. And then their analogy is Ishaq was the first one. No, no, no. They do know that according to Bible, uh, Ismail al-Islam was already born uh, before Ishaq al-Islam, according to Bible. So he was already a, a, a born, and this is why the Sarah, you know, al-Islam was jealous about mm -hmm. that Hagar al-Islam had a son. So they, you know, that's what they say that he was sent out. And after that, both of them for us are blessed prophets, great prophets. We believe in both of them equally. We do not divide that. Some people divide it based on the race. This prophet is from my race, I accept him. We don't do that. Say that Ismail is equal to Sayyidina. But if you want levels, we believe that Muhammad وسلم, is the best. Not because he's our prophet, because of text that we have in the Quran and in the Sunnah. He's number one. Number two comes after him. Number two, the five, the, the four, uh, and the, Rusul, the four mightiest prophets, because total of them is five, one is Sayyidina Muhammad. Who comes right after Sayyidina Muhammad is Ibrahim Is Ibrahim Sayyidina Ibrahim Because of some, but those are not like the, you know, the most important issues. What the most important things that we learn is those points and what do we learn from his life and how can we make it relevant to our life, to live our life. So by this, inshallah, we come to the end of this presentation and I would ask the sisters to go ahead first and inshallah.